Ask your doctor if medical advice from a fabrication shop is right for you. Well, friends, every time I turn around, I'm hearing the phrase uncertain times. And why are these times uncertain? It's because of this coronavirus pandemic. So what are the things that make these times uncertain? Among them, it's shortages of things like toilet paper, bottled water, face masks, respirators, and ventilators. Now, I've already made some face masks, and I didn't bother to do a video on it because there are lots of videos on making face masks, it's, and it's really simple. The easiest face mask is just a bandana folded four times with two rubber bands on it and then folded inward on itself. It, it's incredibly simple. I feel a more worthy task for the channel is to build a ventilator, so that's what we're doing today. Now, before you guys go getting on me about no FDA approval and a bunch of other stuff like that, three weeks ago, cloth masks were strictly out. Now they're not. When times get tough, FDA approval goes out the door. If this thing works, it's going to be an easy project that anyone can make. You'll have this video as reference on how to make it. And on top of all of this, I personally am an at-risk person. I have COPD, and if I need a ventilator, I'm going to have one. And if it doesn't have FDA approval, I just don't give a damn as long as it works. We're going to start with an Intex bellows pump. Okay, that'll deliver the volume, but I don't think this little motor is going to drive it. Uh, but I have this old windshield wiper motor. Let's see if we can make that work. So this is kind of funny. I just did a whole bunch of mods to this motor. And I'll show you up here in the PIP. To start with, I took it apart. Then I identified the, the drive interface from the uh, worm gear. Then I shaved off all the excess material from this black plate that uh, holds all the guts inside. Then I shaved a flat onto this spindle, only to discover that it is stationary. The part I cut off is the part that turns. Now I really need a gearhead motor, because this thing takes a lot of force. Plus, I need the low speed. A person only breathes between 12 and 16 breaths a minute, so that's the maximum number of compressions this thing can have. Alright, it's the next day and I've got construction crew next door, so they might uh, generate some noise for us. I got a windshield wiper motor out of a Chevy Silverado 1500. Um, I got lucky, it had the uh, crank arm on it and some of the wiring, because this plug is really specialized. This one has an electronic pulse module inside the uh, inside the motor controller here and I think that's going to really come in handy. Because of the pulse module I'll be able to use a potentiometer to vary the, uh, the sweep rate. Since the mechanics of all of it is going to be easier I think we'll start with that. Now the first thing we're going to need is a way to hold our pump in place and this piece of aluminum should do nicely for that but it's way bigger than it needs to be. A lot of people don't realize this, but most woodworking tools work just fine on aluminum as well. Okay, so I'm going to take the drop from that cut and make clamps. Okay, now we have our pump mounted to our base plate. Now we need to create a motor mount for, for our windshield wiper motor. And here I'm tapping threads into the crank arm to create an interface for our push rod. So I have a tube here and another tube there and I'm going to weld those two together. But before I do that, I want to build the crank push rod. So I've got my bearing on the crank, and I'm just going to use this foam PVC as the push rod. And we'll stick it right into that hole, and that should work just fine. We'll start by drilling a hole for this bearing, and then somehow interface the two. Okay, that is a really nice fit. I just need to figure a way to hold it in place. That is too wobbly. Even though I put this extra gusset on there, it's this whole base plate is flexing. So the other base plate was just too thin and it was flexing all over the place. I found a piece of 316 
aluminum, which is completely rigid, but it needed uh, to be dressed up a little bit, so I decided to uh, scrub this fish scale pattern into it. Okay, so we're at that point in the build where we can do an initial test. I want to take a minute to thank the nice folks over at Dorman. Uh, they manufacture these pulse control modules and uh, they provided me with the documentation so I could figure out just which one of these wires does what. Okay, and that is not working. Okay, so this is not quite in the right place. If I move it that way, it works. Alright, what I ended up doing was first trying to modify the original bracket and that was a complete failure so I just made a new one. We've got a few wires going on here. We've got the ground and what they call the accessory wire and what that does is if the motor loses power before it's in its home position uh, the accessory voltage will bring it back to home. Then we've got our low speed and that's working pretty good but this is way too fast. The speed of each stroke is probably okay but we need a break between each stroke to allow for exhalation. So it took me a while to figure out how this works. If you energize the low speed wire all by itself with uh, 12 volts, that turns on the windshield washer function, which gives you, I think, three sweeps. Let's try it. If you were to hold it, it just goes on low speed until you let go of it, and that just gives you three more sweeps. When you push the windshield washer button, that is what makes this same connection. And when you let go of the windshield washer button, three more sweeps. Now if you run it through some resistance, and it took me some experimentation to figure this out, now at 3400 ohms, that gives me 13 cycles per minute, and that's a good rate. Adjustable would be better, but right now I just want to prove a concept. Now I've got my little resistor board. I'll just put a piece of double stick tape on that and we'll stick it to the side of the motor. And that should do just fine. Now that we got the pump working, that will force air in, but then we need to uh, put a solenoid valve on it to let the air escape back out of the person's lungs. And the way we'll do that is I'll put a limit switch on just right there, and when the limit switch is engaged, which is most of the time, it will open this solenoid valve. And the moment the paddle comes off the limit switch, this valve closes and allows the pressure to be delivered into the person's lungs. So to interface to the person's lungs, how are we going to do that? Uh, one thing is we don't need this much hose, so I can shorten that up. Luckily, this end just kind of screwed out of it, and it is just the right size for a quarter inch pipe nipple to screw into it. And since I'm using all air fittings, uh, that's perfect. So let me get my Teflon tape. Now the first thing we want to hit is the pressure relief valve, and I've got one here that's good from uh, 0 to 100 PSI. Then we want to be into our exhalation valve, and that can just go out to the air. And the last thing we want to do is interface to the person's lungs, and I think this CPR mask should be a good way to do that. And one thing I just learned is the uh, CPR mask has its own exhalation valve. We're going to have to we're going to have to block that off. Otherwise it won't pressurize. One development that's occurred while I've been working on this project is that uh, they've discovered that the ventilator is not the greatest thing to do and about 80% of the people that get onto them never get off. So that ain't good. <laughs> I wish I had another one of these, but I don't, which means I'll have to make something. But that's what I do, right? Now let's see how this works with this hose on. Okay, it's looking all right. Okay, and my pressure relief valve is working pretty good. Now we need a mounting arrangement for our little manifold here. And I think this piece of aluminum channel will do fine. I drilled and tapped a couple of holes. Give me a place to put my little holder. This thing is almost done. 
Now this may be a crude approach to adapting from my air fitting to this hose, but hey, it works. Now this is almost done. All we got to do is make a mount for the limit switch and, and put it on and then we can wire in the exhale solenoid valve and it'll be ready to test. So we'll come in here with a transfer punch and leave a couple of marks for our holes. And transfer punch as I always say is just for leaving a mark. Not, it's not a center punch. Now we'll drill that and tap a 440 thread into it. Now one thing I did was I soldered that too soon. So I'm going to have to open that back up because I need power to uh, power the solenoid. Okay, so let's give it a try. When this micro switch is engaged, this valve opens, allowing the person to exhale. The moment the uh, pump comes off the micro switch, that valve closes, allowing the pump to pressurize the mask. The breathing rate is pretty good. It, it could be adjusted by changing the value of the resistance of this resistor here. I think it's good where it is. So I'm calling this a win. I'll leave links to all the pieces I used in doobly-doo below in case you want to build one for yourself. But I really hope you don't need one. As always, ask your doctor if medical advice from a fabrication shop is right for you. Anyway, that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Be safe and have a good one.